This video is sponsored by One Military Camp. You can check out the game by clicking on the link in the video description, and if you do so before the 27th of July 2023, you can get One Military Camp on Steam for 30% off. A huge thank you to One Military Camp and Ableite Studios for sponsoring this video. I am gonna let you know right now that this game has a Drill Sergeant character. There's no voice acting for that character, so you know what that means. Hey, stop right there! Hands up! Turn around very slowly! Uh, oh, oh, so you're the replacement they sent from the Officer Academy. Looking like that? I'll have to make do. If High Command considers you worthy, then so do I. There is no other option. I hope you're ready for work. I'm Sergeant John Hawkins. My friends call me Sergeant Hawkins. My mama calls me Sergeant Hawkins, and from now on, I'm Sergeant Hawkins to you. I'm responsible for this facility right here, the One Military Camp, and my mission is to stop that damn dragon, the criminal. He has ruled over the other territories with an iron fist for a year now. We are all that stands in the way of his evil plans of conquest, but you're here to change that. Keep your ears open, look forward, chest out. This camp is all we have left. Follow me inside, I'll bring you up to date. We'll talk about your haircut later. Hey. What the, what do you mean talk about my haircut? Hold up, I just had a shower. I'll have you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. This camp here is a complete disaster. Nothing works, nothing's repaired. And more than anything, we need people. We had to completely abandon it, but then we had to take it back when Dragon seized our other positions. That's why we've gone unnoticed all this time. Go, feel free to explore the camp, but don't hurt yourself. Once you're familiar with the basic controls, select the barracks. I am going to have no voice at the end of this. I will tell you that right now, but I'm having fun, so it's fine. <laughs> so, I wasn't really sure if I was going to go through the tutorial in, in this video or not, it being sponsored and all, but I figure it's a good introduction to what this game's about. I've put a couple of hours into it so far, and I'm kind of really enjoying the vibe. It reminds me a little bit of Evil Genius in the sense of like the, the humor and kind of the, the, the presentation. The gameplay is pretty different, uh, but it's, it's cool. I like it. So I'm having, a, <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of fun with that voice. Anyway, we're going to play through the tutorial and we're going to learn how this all works. So. Let's go ahead and move the camera around. WASD to do the, all that kind of business. It middle mouse button and rotate for all that good business. And we can zoom right into a building right about here and we can see the barracks. The barracks is where our troops have a chance to rest. It's not all about work. You have to keep your mind and your body healthy. Each barracks can hold up to seven cadets. Keep that in mind when things get crowded. As you can see, our new barracks has no power. Like I said, we're running on fumes. Without light, our men and women will find out what the darkest hour is really like, and we need to fix that. Build an electrical generator to supply this power. <laughs> oh, man. Build an electrical generator to supply power to this whole area. I can build an electrical generator. We'll go to the bottom left here. We'll get ourselves an electrical generator. We'll put it right about there. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, there's so much dialogue. A well-lit barracks, just the way I like it. Now the newbies will have a place to take a breather after their training. Great. Now we have a place to sleep. Let's talk about the chow. Find the mess hall and click on it. Mess hall is going to be this guy right over here. Ah, army chow. You never forget that taste. Back in my day, they even used to toss in an old tire or two. This is gourmet food by comparison. Let's use this old mess hall, but to do that, we should connect it to the rest of the camp. Build a road out to that mess hall. I can do that. We can totally build a road. So we go over here. We get the roads tool. You see? This does fit in on the channel. It has roads that I can build, just like City Skylines. <laughs> all right, we'll build, uh, we'll build this over here. We'll get that all connected. Good job! This road will help our troops reach the mess hall easily. Now we have to connect it to the power grid. Build some electrical poles to the mess hall. I can do that. So again, we go into the build menu in the bottom left. We have our electrical poles here. And I think what I'm going to do is just have these guys line the road. That seems like that seems like the way to do it. So I can go here, I can go here, and I can do I kind of want to do this so it goes around kind of nicely. That looks pretty good to me. And let there be light. <laughs> it's starting to work. Good. Now, we have to hire a new cook. 
preferably someone who doesn't add chunks of tire to the soup. Some buildings, like the mess hall, require us to hire some people, and by that I mean qualified personnel. Workers can sleep in the barracks with the troops, but their morale will be higher if you build them a private house. If we want them to do their jobs well, we have to make sure they have the best accommodations. Luckily, I had a private house built for our first cook. But if you want to bring in more employees, you'll have to build more, and you best remember that. I put up some advertisements to bring in new candidates. The first one should be here any minute now. Let's see if anyone who came in can help us. Get a load of this guy, Hansel Popowski. Hmm. As you can see, every candidate has their own specific skills. The skills we want depends on the job. On one hand, they have skills, which are their basic abilities. On the other hand, they have traits, which show us their special talents. Pay close attention and hire only the best. Looks like this Popowski guy isn't a bad cook. He says he makes an incredible cabbage soup. My favorite. There's no room for incompetence at this camp, so be careful about who you hire if you don't want any unpleasant surprises. Select Hansel Popolski and hire him as a cook. All right. <laughs> oh, man, I'm gonna... I, <laughs> I have like two other... I have a lot of... <laughs> there's a lot of sponsored work coming up in the next couple of days and weeks. I have a lot of that to do later today, so I might... I This is the first one that I'm doing. I might regret this. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get this guy as a cook. He's going to be going to the mess hall as his main activity building, which is where he works. His accommodation is going to be the private house, which is already built. So we'll go ahead and hire him for 350 per day. We can see his stats here on the left, by the way. We can see some traits down here. So he's pretty quick. He's got some strength, intelligence, and accuracy. Let's just get him hired. He's <laughs> changed into a chef gear, which is great. That's that's pretty cool. Hey, that's the spirit right there. Now that Mr. Popovsky has joined us, our troops will eat like kings. I'm dying to taste his soup, but it's still early. First, we have to get the mess hall ready. This building's been abandoned for a long time and is in terrible condition. Look at those floors. It's disgusting. We need to hire a maintenance worker to straighten out this mess. Maintenance workers make sure that our buildings are always in good condition. If we don't look after them, our troops won't be able to train. This is crucial work. On top of that, they are also in charge of managing our camp warehouses and supplies. They're our go-to guys for everything. How about hiring a maintenance worker? Once we have one, just select the mess hall and request it to be cleaned. Back in my day, we just used a toothbrush. So make sure they get it sparkling clean. I want to see my reflection in those floors. I'm having like chest pains doing that voice, but I'm, I'm committing to it. Not chest pains. I think my lungs collapsing. It's probably fine. Now we need to build ourselves a maintenance building. This is going to provide maintenance and replenish resources and it can kind of go anywhere. So I'm going to put it back here next to where we've got our power, which means I'm going to need to connect it to this road, which is totally fine. And it gives us a little bit of space down here where I might put more power eventually. Uh, but we also need another private house so that the maintenance workers can do their thing. And I'm kind of tempted to actually line those across there. That might be a little bit better. Let's uh, let's build a couple of these. I can't afford it right now and we're going to need them later anyway. So if I hold shift when placing them, I can place multiple, which I think is totally fine. So we'll get some private houses there. I'm tempted to go for some symmetry and put some on the other side as well. I don't need to do this, but I like the idea of doing this. So I'm going to uh, to do this. We'll go ahead and put another three private houses over on uh, this side as well. So that later on, as we get specialists in here, we can, you know, go ahead and do our thing. So we need to hire a maintenance worker. So if we zoom in here, we have Robert Clark right here. Robert has a good amount of strength. We want him as maintenance, which by the way, uh, all of these stats are color coded for a reason. So speed being blue relates to uh cooking so you can see the blue on there maintenance being strength is is red same with uh intelligence being good for medics and researchers and then accuracy being good for defense so this guy is going to be working the maintenance building and he's going to be living in a private house we'll go ahead and hire him he gets changed into his maintenance gear get to work i want to see this camp squeaky clean <clears throat> well moving on camp maintenance is in good hands now all we're missing is the supplies. We can't run a mess hall if we don't have any food, can we? We have to take care of this. Supplies are essential for keeping the machinery running. We have to be careful and make sure that we always have a constant flow of resources. Our main supplies are food, <laughs> fuel, food, medicine, and ammo. The downside is that they are hard for us to find. To get them, we'll have to talk to some suppliers. Let's go to the map and I'll explain it to you. This is the country map. As you can see, Dragon has taken control of almost every region. That... Rakar... That, that, that fool! Damn him! 
I, I've got no idea. No, not even going to try. <laughs> not even going to try. To bring up your map, either press the country map icon on the bottom left of your screen or zoom out in camp view until the map appears. If you want to return to camp, press the country map icon again or zoom in on your map. Easy, isn't it? Now look closely. You see those little buildings? Some of them are resource suppliers. The problem is that most of them are in areas controlled by dragon. As we complete missions, we will unlock new territories and gain access to those suppliers. Some have more competitive prices or greater production capacity. Keep an eye out for good deals so we can save some money. Anyway, let's go back to the camp. We need to talk about how to manage our supplies. We will need warehouses to manage our supplies. Warehouses allow us to store those precious resources. They come in various types depending on what they hold. Don't mix food with fuel or we might have an unexpected accident. You also have to place them close to the buildings that need them because our maintenance personnel will have to go back and forth pushing a wheelbarrow. If you put a warehouse too far away, they'll have to run a marathon just to get there. Build our first, first food warehouse near the mess hall. All right, All right. I, can, I can do that. I, I can. Oh man, I'm having too much fun. I'm, I'm having too much fun with this. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, let's, uh, oh man. Let's put that right there. Seems like a good place for it. That's right, a brand new warehouse. Our maintenance staff will be in charge of distributing the supplies. In the meantime, let's contact our first supplier. If you look at the warehouse info panel, you can bring up the supplier list. We only have one right now, but more will appear as we gain new territories. Check your map from time to time to compare suppliers in unlocked territories. Mark my words, managing your supplies well is one of the keys to success. But enough chit chat. Our warehouse won't be worth a thing if we don't put something in it. Request our first food order. All right, I can do that. <laughs> oh man, so we go here. We wanna go to providers and we have a few, well, we have one available. We have top bun. Top, oh my God. I just, I've, I've not paid attention to the name of the suppliers until now. I love that. Top bun is amazing. Uh, we're going to buy a full warehouse worth, which is going to be 1600 gold coins. So we'll buy that, which should get delivered and does get delivered by helicopter because of course it does. That's amazing. Well done. Our food reserves are at optimal levels, but beware, nothing lasts forever. Our buildings will let you know when we're low on supplies so that you can order another shipment. You can order more supplies from the info panel of each warehouse or from the supplier on the country map. Country, country map. It's up to you, but make sure we never run out of supplies. Now that you know how it's done, how about building a fuel warehouse to supply that electrical generator? Remember, the more warehouses we have, the more maintenance workers we will need. You might need to hire someone else. Now let's get to work. Oh man. <laughs> All right, I can do that. So build a fuel warehouse. So we want to go down here we want to get ourselves a fuel warehouse and these things are going to be loud. So that's what the ring coming out from this thing is. That's how loud the uh, the warehouse is going to be. And you don't want something loud next to where people are living. So what I think I'm going to do is get a little bit. I might get a little bit cheesy is what I might do. I'm going to build a road down here and I'm going to build a road over here. And I'm going to go ahead and put another electrical generator right about there. And then I'm going to build a road kind of like, kind of like this. I want to go back a little bit. I want to do this. And I might even go so far as, can I bulldoze you? I think I can bulldoze you. So we'll get rid of that. And then I want to just do this so that the workers can kind of loop around. Now they do have a bit of a distance to go to get there, but once they get the supplies, they don't have that far to go. So I think this is probably fair enough. And then what I can do is just sort of run the power lines kind of this way. So we go from here. We want to go down this way a little bit. We maybe want to go straight across, probably. I think that's probably fine. We'll bring them around this way, bring it down there. And that seems pretty solid. So what I'd like to do is bulldoze this guy. And then I kind of need to bulldoze these guys as well. I think there is a, there's a bulldozer option in here, but I don't think I can use it right now at this stage of the tutorial. So we'll just get rid of these guys by hand since we don't really need them anymore. And we do get refunded for them. We get like 30 gold back. So that seems pretty good. Let's go into here. Let's go to providers. We've got just gas, which is fair enough. We'll get 200, we'll get it delivered. And so that'll come in here. 
And then this electrical generator can be resupplied whenever it needs to be resupplied, which is absolutely fantastic. Now we do need to hire another maintenance worker apparently. And we have Sophia Ortiz over here who has pretty good strength stats. So we'll go for maintenance worker, maintenance building, private house is solid. So we'll hire you for 300 a day. You get changed into your gear. And we have, <laughs> we have, we have Sergeant Hawkins again. Hey, this is starting to look like a real camp. We have supplies, a place to eat, a place to sleep. It's time to get to work. He keeps saying that. He keeps saying that. Let's start with the training buildings. Our troops have to get through some tough training before they can pick a specialization. There are many different specializations though, from pilot to comms operator or even spy. Each specialization requires a different set of skills. That's why the first skills training is the most important. As new recruits come in, we'll need to think very carefully about the training that we give them and which specializations we need the most. For now, let's focus on two kinds of basic training. Build a strength training building and an intelligence training building. Oh, and one more thing. Choose where you build them wisely. Training buildings make a distinct sound like an enemy's weapon. It's best to keep barracks away from entertainment areas so that our troops get some sleep at night. Let's get to work. I like this guy. I like this guy. So we need some training buildings. We have some supply stuff down here. This is honestly, this might just be my warehouse area. So let's, let's say that training buildings, I don't really know, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I really, I really don't. I mean, we've got some options, right? We got the, uh, we got the intelligence training. And obviously it's going to make some noise potentially. I'm going to put it there because I think that's kind of a cool place for it. And then this guy has to be fully functional. So we need some roads going out to this guy as well. So we'll bring a road straight up here. We'll bring a road straight across here and it's going to need power as well. So we can filter through all the buildables, which I love. I love being able to do this. It's so nice. Uh, we'll get an electric pole that comes up this way. And so that's now functional. And then strength training is going to be the other one. So we want to go down to training. We want to go to strength. And this is another building that can go. I might actually just put it over here. I might just have them sort of alongside each other like that. That might be the way to go for this. And then again, we just connect the uh, the path up there. It's already got power, which is fantastic. Outstanding. Our camp is now operational and I see some new faces there. It seems my advertising campaign was effective after all. Let's take a closer look. Oh boy. Oh boy. We got a couple of people in here. Make sure you check everybody's skills and traits. If they have the wrong skills or traits, they won't be effective on missions. And that's something we can't afford. Let's start with that one right there. For our training program, we need someone with an athletic build. Someone who is used to physical activity. I don't think that's the case here. This recruit isn't in great shape. I don't see much potential. Maybe we should take a look at some of the other recruits. We'll figure out what to do with this one. Oh boy. That's a little mean. Let's see about this recruit right here. Good, much better. That That's the one right there. This recruit's in really good shape and I think they have a lot of potential. The decision's yours, but we need to recruit someone as soon as possible. Pick one of them and we'll start training. So I have some choices. We've got Charles Moore here and we've got Cheryl Scott. Now Cheryl has a lot of intelligence. Cheryl has a lot of intelligence. So I want to put her in intelligence training because she's going to, not that she's going to level up faster, but she has like a head start on intelligence, which is going to be good. So we'll hire Cheryl as a private and that should be good. Soldier, get to work. Sorry, I get excited every time a new cadet steps onto the training field. I love the smell of sweat in the morning. <sighs> Reminds me of my early days, except it was a lot tougher back then. Sergeant Campbell, he was one tough guy. Anyway, where was I? Ah, yeah, skills training. You see, when a recruit comes into camp as a private, they'll go to whichever training they want unless you tell them otherwise. These young people today have no respect for anything. They think they can do whatever they want. If my buddy Sergeant Campbell could see them, it would drive him nuts. L like I said, they're hard headed. The only solution is for you to tell them where you want them to train. Our new recruit is on their way to the strength training building, but we're gonna change their plans. Click on the soldier and in the service section of their info panel, assign them to the intelligence training center. When the time comes, it'll come in handy if we're able to specialize troops into comms operators. Remember what I told you, skills training is key when deciding which specializations our cadets should have. Finally, if you want your troops to train faster, you can speed things up in the menu on the bottom right of your screen. 
There's a lot of work ahead. Let's get to it. Yes, sir. All right, let's get to it. That sounds like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, you've done very well. Training's going smoothly and I think we're ready to bring in more recruits. Let's see if we can get a few artillery specialists and comms operators. But first, they'll need to complete their training as privates. Let's focus on training more troops. I'll tell you how specializations work later on. I'll leave it in your hands. Don't let me down. All right. All right. Am I, <laughs> am I now being left alone <laughs> to do my thing? I think I might be. All righty. So we have this guy who is decent at strength. So we'll bring him in and put him, put him in strength training, which I think we need for artillery specializations anyway. I'm pretty sure. We can actually set a goal here and we're looking for artillery, which is strength related. So sure. we'll go ahead and set his goal, which is totally fine. Yes. Uh, we can go and look yes, at the other one as well. I think this is my soldiers list. It absolutely is. So we're looking for Cheryl and I'm pretty sure Cheryl's going to want to be a comms operator. So we can get her training there. We've got the other one training up in strength training. And then eventually, and I think we already do have more people coming in. Now you're pretty good at intelligence and strength, but I think what we'll do is just put you into intelligence for the time being and that'll be great so off you go to do your training and then as buses come along we should have more people coming in here which is gonna be great oh what's going on here it's almost night time time flies when you're busy your people recruits included need to get sleep at night rest is important however if we want these to work right our camp will have to provide services around the clock obviously we can't make them work day and night that would be inhumane but we can assign some of our workers to the night shift. Pay attention, this is important. To make the best use of our people's skills, managing their schedules properly is crucial. Don't worry, it's easier than it looks. You can bring up the info panel by selecting a soldier or worker, and here you can see their current schedule and the buildings they're assigned to. The schedule has day and night shifts and is divided into service and rest periods. It's important to find a balance between these if you want to keep morale high and prevent injury. Luckily, I'm always on top of things. I prepared a couple of standard schedules for you to use. Simply select whoever you want and choose a night or day schedule. It's getting dark and this camp has to keep going. Hire a cook and assign them to the night shift. Okay, we can totally do that. So we got you. You have a bit of speed, which is fantastic. You're going to be working the mess hall. You're going to be doing a private house and you're going to be doing a night shift right there. So you're going to be coming in to go to bed and then working overnight. So we'll go ahead and get you in here, which is going to be good. We're going to have a mess hall working around the clock, which is what we're looking for. And now we just need to hire more people. So, I mean, we've got, we got you coming in. What do you do? You do a bit of strength so you can go and just do strength training, which will be absolutely fantastic. So that's two people doing strength training. That's two people doing intelligence training can i build by any chance a barracks i can here's what i'm thinking here's here's what i'm thinking i'm thinking i want to line a couple of barracks right here and i want to get those connected up like this because i want to get rid of this one i don't i don't love that spot so i'm going to get rid of it i'm also going to go in and get some uh oh good job our camp will have a 24 7 kitchen service Remember that whenever you hire or recruit someone, they will have a night or day schedule depending on when they first set foot into camp. The time of day is given on the time bar at the bottom right of your screen. You can also speed up time if you prefer to skip the wait. You'll need to arrange our troop schedules well. Make sure that all other camp services are provided around the clock and everything will run smoothly. But let's get on with the lesson. Sun's going down and our cadets and workers have finished for the day. This has truly been the longest day. It's important that they get a good night's rest so they'll be able to work harder tomorrow. We can't afford to have people slacking around here. We have to keep morale high if we want to keep this going. In my day, Sergeant Campbell knew how to be uh, uh, persuasive, but his methods, thankfully, are a thing of the past. I never thought a cadet could run so much, but apparently alligators are pretty, pretty fast. Nowadays, we use less uh, medieval methods to encourage the troops. To keep morale up, you'll have to be careful not to assign too much work. Also, as you may have seen, we can construct certain buildings or other entertainment amenities to help reduce stress. How about a game at the arcade or a visit to the museum? 
I guarantee you the troops will appreciate it, and they will show their appreciation by working harder. So, for today's lesson, build an entertainment building, and if you like, add some street lights to the camp. Our troops can't see in the dark. Yet. All right, we can do that. I do want to get some power in here first because that's kind of important. So uh, we'll do we'll do this and we'll do this. So these guys all have power. And then in terms of entertainment, we just have this entertainment building, which is generic apparently. Uh, but that's fine. We could put this thing next to the mess hall, which I think is, I think that's a reasonable place for it. Like I feel like an entertainment building right there is a, is a good place. We can connect it down like this. We could probably run a path right through there as well. But for now, we'll just kind of leave it be. And let's also make sure, ooh, this thing's starting to get overloaded. Maybe we want to go and get another power generator. That seems like it'd be a really good idea. Let's also bulldoze. Can I bulldoze this connection? I think I can. So bulldoze you. And then let me go and just build another one. So electric pole, we can use those to connect these guys together. We can use one to go from here to there and then down that way and now everything's connected these guys are running a 48 percent load which is totally fine so now we just have to hire more people which i can totally do so we've got a couple of recruits here you're pretty good at speed you're pretty good at strength we'll go for i think we'll go for strength training we'll just keep that relatively straightforward you're pretty good at intelligence and strength i think we'll just do intelligence for this guy his need for food increases 14% faster. I don't love that, but we'll get him in here anyway. And those two are going to be training at night, which I think is pretty good. That's that's kind of uh, that's kind of what we're looking for. We've also got everybody else down here at the entertainment building. We got them at the arcade. We got them in here getting some grub. I'm also realizing that we might actually want to get someone that can do some maintenance. So you are actually really good at strength. I'm going to get you... So I can't put you in the maintenance building. Can I put you in there at night? No. So I think you can only have two people working in a building regardless of the shift. So what I want to do is I want to get another maintenance building. And I want to put it maybe there. I think I could get away with that. So I'm going to put a maintenance building there. I'm going to take a little path out to it like this. And then I want to go to this guy. And I want to say that you are going to work nights as maintenance. And so that'll keep us covered. If anything needs resupplied overnight, that guy can go and do it. And that seems like a good thing. Now, we need to train a soldier to reach 40 intelligence points. We have you. You are at 15 right now. Uh, and we have you. This is Cheryl's at 25. That's, that's great and all, but don't we have, we had Sophia somewhere, I'm pretty sure. Let me have a look at my soldiers and see who we got. So if I sort by intelligence, We've got Thomas. Did I not have one that was like really good? That's, uh, did I, did I not have one called Sophia that was like really good and, and, and smart? No, she's better at strength and she's also doing maintenance. Okay, well, fair enough. Uh, that's fine. We've got Thomas who is doing intelligence training right now. He's at 34 out of 40. Oh, I love to see that camp in full swing. The hard training. The sun in your face and the sobs of troops begging for mercy. It reminds me of the good old days. It's time to take our training one step further. These rookies are ready for their specializations. They will go from inexperienced weaklings to well-trained professionals. How exciting. I don't know if you've noticed, but each soldier's info panel allows you to choose which class you'd like them to specialize in and shows you what skills are required. When one of our soldiers meets the requirements, they will let you know they are ready for a specialization. However, I recommend you check how our cadets are progressing from time to time. We need a comms operator, but we can't promote one before building a comms operator, <coughs> operator specialization building. <laughs> once, you, once you have it, just go to the soldier's info panel and from there, bring up the specialization tree. It's that easy. I'll leave it to you. Make me proud. All right, we need to build a comms operator specialization building, which is this thing right here. And what I want to do with this is I want to put it back here. So it's going to be directly behind the intelligence training building so that they're like, you know, they're right next to each other. And that kind of makes sense to me. So now we need to specialize a soldier into the comms operator class. We have Thomas Johnson ready to specialize, which is this guy right here. So we'll go ahead and specialize. 
he's gonna be working uh as comms he's gonna be here at the comms operator specialization building he is gonna be still in the barracks so we'll go ahead and accept that he actually looks really cool that actually does look really cool congratulations officer we now have our first specialist our camp will be full of true professionals soon just give it time and as i already mentioned we can make troops work day or night but that's not all if you want you can ask them to work more hours or give them some time off this can be very useful when you're close to reaching a training target or if you think the soldier needs to rest and recover but be careful don't push the new people too hard or things could go badly a tired cadet it's more likely to get injured. Rest is just as important as work, if not more. And don't you forget that. That said, we can't let our troops take too many days off either, or they'll get lazy. Anyway, I think you know everything there is to know about how we train our troops. It is time to get serious. We need to start running missions as soon as possible. In addition to a comms operator, we need to train two artillery specialists. So get on it right away. Once they're ready, We'll be able to stand up to that damnable dunderhead dragon. Let's get to work. So to get two privates specialized in artillery, we need to look at our people. We need to sort by strength. We have this one with level 42 strength right now. So if I set your goal to artillery, it needs to be, I need the artillery building before I can do it. And we're gonna do the same with you as well. We're gonna set your goal to be artillery and you're very close to leveling up. So that's gonna be pretty good. The only thing we really need is the artillery specialization. So let's go ahead and build that thing right about here. And while we're here, let's also go ahead and build the other training buildings. So speed training, we can do accuracy training as well. We're actually going to have some trouble putting the specialization buildings back here as well because we have this uh, this water, but that should be fine. We'll connect those together. We'll get this over here. We'll go and get some power down here as well. So from here to there should be just fine and so we're probably not going to be sending anyone out to these buildings just yet but eventually we absolutely will be we also have these guys ready to specialize already so you are specializing in comms operator which is totally fine by me gregory is specializing as artillery so we'll go ahead and get that going as well which means i think we have one of two specialized in artillery which is fantastic news which means I think the only other one that's going to be specializing that way is on the night shift. Yeah. So you actually, you are ready to go. Not bad. All right, we'll accept that, which means we now have the two ready for a mission. These recruits have become fully fledged professionals. I think they're qualified to take on their first mission. Wait a second. I see you haven't built a heliport yet. We can't send our people to the front without a means of transportation. Let's fix that. Heliports are essential buildings for us. They enable us to send our cadets on missions in other territories. It is essential that we build one as soon as possible. So let's get to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do that in a second. I, I want to I want to hire some people because we have some people here who we can hire. Uh, we have this one, for example, who has some uh, speed skills, which is pretty good. We've got some intelligence as well, but I think we have a few people with that. So I'm going to bring you in and send you to speed training. Uh, we have you. You can probably go to accuracy training. We have you. You are average across the board, to be quite honest. So we'll send you to speed training. And we have you. You can go to, I'm going to say accuracy training as well. So that'll be pretty good. We'll bring those four in. We'll send them off. Let them do their thing. Did I hear a bus? I did. We've got another one. You can go and do... Honestly, I'm going to say intelligence for you. Let's do, uh, actually, what have you got? So you're a party animal, less motivation, loses motivation 10% faster without free time. You're fine. So there we go. We'll bring that guy in and then we'll go and build a fully functional heliport, which is this thing right here. Now, as was mentioned, this thing's kind of loud. Unfortunately, it also can't go here. I don't think. Yeah, it's not going to fit there. Uh, we could put it here, though. A little bit out of the way, but it is uh, it is loud, so keeping it up here by all the training stuff is probably not a bad idea. So yeah, I think Heliport can live right about there. It doesn't have power, which is a bit of a problem. You probably want power for your Heliport. You. Oh boy. Hey, start your engines, boys! It is time to fly! Let's check the map to see where we're needed. Looks like they're in urgent need of help in Rocket Appendix. 
If you select the mission on the map, you will see information on the requirements, troops we can send, and the reason for the mission. Let's see. It seems the citizens of Rocky Appendix are desperate. A dragon has banned cabbage in their territory. Cabbage is, of course, as you know, a national delicacy. Stuffed cabbage, cabbage soup, cabbage pie. Oh, classic sauerkraut. They even banned Brussels sprouts. You know, the ones people like to saute in butter. So delicious. My God, it's just so heartless and cruel. These people can't live with that cabbage. We have to do something immediately. Select the troops you want to send on the mission. At the bottom, you can see their probability of victory in percent. The better trained the troops we send are, the more likely we are to succeed with the mission. As you can see, each mission... <laughs> Oh man, each mission has requirements we have to meet. This one asks us to send one comms operator and two artillery specialists. If we succeed, we'll have more money for our camp. Come on, let's get with it. These people can't hold on a minute longer. So the people of Rocky Appendix are desperate. That evil dragon has banned all cabbage. Can you believe it? It's the local specialty and the people are going crazy. Unfortunately, Dragon's forces are pretty weak here. This is a perfect opportunity to put what we've learned into practice. Put together a squad of our best communicator, uh, communications specialists and artillery troops and show that villain what we're made of. These people can't live without their cabbage. We have to give them hope again. So, select three soldiers. We want a comms specialist and you can see their level here. So level 25, we've got artillery and we've got artillery. I don't love that our percentage of, of winning is, uh, it's not very good. What I'm thinking is I just let them level up for a little bit and then they'll be good to go and, you know, do the mission and win. And I've just realized while we're waiting for people to level up, we probably want to go and get some more warehouses. We need an ammo warehouse because we are running out of ammo at the uh, different training places here. So I think what I'm going to do, since we can't really use this space for too much, I'm going to put a couple of uh, ammo warehouses right there. We'll get those connected like so. And I guess we'll bring a little path sort of around like this so that we can loop around there. And then what we can do is go to providers. We can go ahead and buy a whole bunch of ammo. We can go to this one, go to providers, and we already have an order going on. So we'll bring that in here. And if I go to providers now, we can bring in another one and that'll fill up the ammo warehouses. We can go and say, let's restock both the accuracy training and artillery specialization. And we can see some maintenance workers coming along, grabbing the stuff loading it up and that'll get taken around to those places to restock them which means that they'll keep working which is what we're looking for so we're not going to have to worry about those things stopping working anytime soon and i suppose we're probably good enough to go ahead and do this mission so comms operators up to level 40 already we have you at level 36 and we have you at level 16. now this guy's not doing anything right now i think he's a night shift worker but I mean, we were at 6160 earlier. We're now at 9260. So the chances of us winning, well, it's considerably higher. So we'll start the mission. The helicopter gets sent over. And now we kind of just wait. So this is where the comparison to Evil Genius comes in. I mentioned it earlier. You send them out to do things. The higher level they are, the better the chances of winning. And we just wait, which I'm totally fine with because I get to manage my camp back here and make it look all pretty. And just like that, we have been successful. We had four communications. We have officer, we have just deployed to Rocky Appendix. The streets are deserted and we are seeing the remains of charred cabbage. Communication two was a failure. The troops are coming for us. We'll run to the town square and search a cover. We then reached the town square. Dragon soldiers were trying to light a large cabbage on fire. We proceeded to take them into custody. And then finally, Rocky Appendix is safe and we have recovered the cabbage. I repeat, we have the cabbage. Not bad. Not bad at all. We got some gold from that. We got all these guys back alive and safe. I'm okay with that. I'm very much okay with that. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, no. I've got more. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, what do you What do you look like you sound like? What are you? Hey, you saved us. That despicable dragon had us on braids and water. <laughs> okay, why can't I do a Scottish accent? He took away our cabbage and made us burn our entire crop. A lot of good cabbage died on that horrible summer evening. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what? To hell with it. 
Yes, I propose that we erect a statue for our fallen cabbage, and from now on, this day shall be remembered as Cabbage Day. Uh... Um, well... Yeah! We shall cook cabbage for breakfast, cabbage for lunch, and cabbage for dinner. We shall bring offerings to the Cabbage God, and... Mm -mm -mm. Enough! <laughs> I think you're getting a bit too excited. Yes! We could do that, or maybe... Well, maybe we don't do any of that and we just focus on rebuilding the city. Hmm. Aye, that sounds better. You sound like yourself again. I thought I'd lost you. Please, Sergeant, you have to do something. Our friends from the Southern Territories have told us that their situation is starting to get very bad. Jantine Roosevelt, one of Dragon's top three generals, rules with an iron fist. She doesn't mess around. Be careful. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. What was what was this guy's voice? Hey, Victory, well done, guys. You did a great job. The people of Rocky Appendix can now live in peace. You've all earned some rest. And the good news don't stop there. We've earned some extra money we can use to upgrade the camp. Every time we reclaim a territory, we bring in more funding for our cause. The more territories we liberate, the more economic support we will have, and this will allow us to upgrade our camp and train our troops. But we aren't just here to take territories back. We also have to maintain good relations with the towns within. Each town has a popularity rating that we have to monitor. If this rating is high enough, we gain additional funds to take on Dragon. The recruits coming from those villages will have better traits. Each village has its own. As you can see, the villages will also provide us with a daily income thanks to taxes, which we can lower or raise as we wish. But think this... Wait a minute, but think that this will have consequences. If you raise taxes in a town, your popularity will decrease. But if you lower them, it'll have the opposite effect. In addition, our popularity will it will affect the influx of new applicants. So if you want to get enough recruits, keep it high. Finally, if you see that you are short of candidates, you can make a request for more by running a marketing campaign. This way, the next bus will arrive with a group of applicants instead of just one. Decide for yourself what's more profitable. More income or more and better applicants. It's up to you to win the support of the people. Treat the towns well and they will support us unconditionally. Only if we stand together can we defeat Dragon. Now you learn fast. I like seeing that enthusiasm in the people I work with. Keep it up. We still have one important topic to cover though and I think you're going to like it. Technology. Our enemy uses state-of-the-art equipment. It is key that we do the same. In addition to constructing buildings and recruiting soldiers, we need to improve our infrastructure and research new technologies. To do this, we use research points. We earn these at the research lab where our best minds are focused on studying and learning everything they can to improve our camp. Thanks to their tireless effort, we earn research points that we can redeem for new advances on the technology tree. Sounds good. Build a research lab and hire a researcher. Once we have one, I'll tell you a bit more about the tech tree. So this is our research lab. We'll go ahead and get one of these. It could probably go up here, but it doesn't seem like it's going to cause too much noise. So I might just put it down this way so they don't have to go too far from where they are living. Uh, I could put it here as well. And thinking about it, I'm going to put it there and I'm going to get myself some more private houses because what I can do is have the researchers live real close, which I think will be good. And we do need to hire a researcher. So let's see, are any of you smart? You are not. Are you smart? You're not too bad. Can I just look at these candidates? So I'm looking for someone with really good, aha, intelligence. All right. So we'll have you work, um, we're gonna have you work nights. I would like to get another couple of researchers though. Do we have anyone else with, you've got uh, level 11 intelligence. So I'm gonna get you to work day so that we have researchers going around the clock. And that seems like a good way to do things. Well done! We're all starting to set research in new technologies. Luckily, I set aside a few research points for when you were ready. We could use them to improve our current infrastructure, but we're going to start by developing a new building. We'll start by developing the Explosives Engineer Specialization Building. This will provide us with a new type of speciality training that is essential for some missions. Later on, you're also going to be able to develop defensive structures and alternative energy sources. There's a lot to choose from. Take a look. Is that clear? Now, 
Develop this new technology and start upgrading our camp. And don't forget to upgrade your other buildings from time to time. Don't let Dragon beat us in the science race. So this is the tech tree and it does look kind of cool. We have the explosives engineer specialization building right there. We have the infantry specialization as well. We have a lot of logistics stuff as well. We can upgrade maintenance buildings. We can upgrade the electrical generators. We can start heading towards uh, wind generators, I guess. We can upgrade recruitment centers. We can do a lot of stuff. We also have the defensive stuff. We have the health stuff, such as infirmaries to level two and physiotherapy clinics to level two. We have psychological therapies. We'll get the explosives engineer specialization though, since that's what we're looking for. Yep. And I'm assuming we have to go and build it. One military camp is in full swing. Little by little, we will recover the other territories from dragon's clutches. That no nothing good for nothing spinous. He's getting on my nerves. My biggest regret is not being able to confront him face to face. While the others went to fight, I'd I had to stay at the rear. Someone had to train the new batch of recruits. How frustrating. We have to put an end to his plans and restore peace to these lands. Our first victory gives me hope that we will succeed. I've taught you all the basics of getting the camp up and running, but there are still many things we will have to talk about during your adventure. I believe that you will defeat Dragon. Together, we will end his reign of evil. We will take back every territory in the country, and we will drive that vermin from our lands. Good luck. You know, I think that's the end of the main bulk of the tutorial, yes, which sir. is probably a good thing because my voice is not going to hold up for very much longer. Uh, let's go ahead and specialize, specialize you in uh, artillery since we can uh, we can do that. And as you can see on the right, we have a bunch of missions available. This one's going to need a spy. This one's going to need explosives engineers. This one needs infantry. So what we can do is we can go in here. We can go to training. And we don't have the infantry specialization available. But what we do have is the explosives engineer specialization available. And uh, that is related to speed. I think that's speed training there. So what we'll do is put it right there. And I'm I'm thinking that's just far enough away from the barracks that it's not going to be a problem. So we'll put it right there and uh, we'll get people going to that soon enough. In fact, what we can do is go to my people, go to speed. We've got a private here at level 77. So I can set you right. to already upgrade to an explosives yes, engineer. We have you at level 72. I can set you to go and be an explosives engineer. So we'll specialization, specialize you in that as well. That gives us two of them right away, which is what we needed for this. We needed two specialization. We needed two of them uh, for this one as well, which is a timed mission. We don't have forever for that, but that's pretty cool. That is, that is pretty cool. We also have enough uh, research points to go and get the infantry specialization. So we'll unlock that. We'll head back over here and we'll build the infantry training thing, which is right about there. And so now if I go back to my people and I go to accuracy training, we have this guy who can be specialized as infantry immediately. So he's going to go and do infantry specialization. We have this guy who we can do the same thing for. So go ahead and specialize like so. And so now we have everyone we need for every mission, except for this first one, which needs a spy. Now specializing someone as a spy, I am pretty sure if we go and look at the tech tree, we are going to need this right here. So we need 450 tech points. And from what I gather, it's going to need intelligence and speed. So essentially to specialize, to specialize someone normally, you need like 40 XP in a certain uh, thing, right? They need 40 intelligence. They need 40 speed. They need 40 of both to become a spy. So that's that's kind of how that works, which I think is pretty cool. I like that you can do that. You have to train them in multiple things. That that makes sense. And what are you complaining about? What's your what's your issue right now? Must assign a valid building. Do you have nowhere to go to the barracks? What are you what are you doing, you maniac? Go to the go to the thing. We also have a bunch more recruits down here, which I mean, we have room for four more. So I might as well hire you guys. I don't really want strength for anybody. I do kind of want to spy though. So I guess let's go and have you. I might put you in the research building, honestly. I don't think I can though. So I'm just going to put you here and you can work the day shift, I guess, in uh, in speed training. I don't know who is anyone better at speed than this guy. We've got 13. Let's let's put you in there. 
So you're going to be doing day shift uh, speed training, which is totally fine. You are going to be doing, I'm going to say, let's just do intelligence training and also day shift. So we'll hire you. We'll go to this guy. You are going to do speed training during the day as well. And you are going to be doing, oh, wow. You're actually pretty good. We'll put you on, I'm going to say intelligence as well. So we'll put you on intelligence training right there during the day. So we'll get some of these guys leveling up and ready to go. And I suppose what we'll do is get ready to wrap things up there for today. Because this video is going on a little bit longer than it, the, you know, I don't want to make it super, super long. But I do want to send some guys out on a mission. I want to see how this goes. So annoyingly, my experienced soldiers from before, they actually need to rest. I say annoyingly. I mean, it makes sense. So we'll hold off. We do have you at level 24, though. We have you at level 30. We have you at level 28. So with those guys, the enemy has a battle rank of 80. We have 82. So if I let them get a bit more experienced, we can absolutely go out on that mission. And I suppose let's let's do that mission. Let's do the timed one. Mission available, stopping power, 9,000 gold. If we do it, we'll give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. And I'll tell you one other thing I'm going to do while I'm waiting for these guys to level up. We're going to go to Karen Roberts here because Karen's speed experience right now is 68. We're going to switch Karen over to intelligence training and set the goal to be a spy. We need level 55 intelligence, which we can totally manage to do. It'll take a little while, but we'll get there. And the other interesting little detail is that we actually happen to have a decent little amount of uh, research points, so we can go and get the spy specialization. So we'll buy that and we'll head over here and we'll get ourselves the spy specialization building, which is this guy right here. It is a little bit loud, so we'll put it next to the heliport, which seems like a fair enough place. This guy is actually out of bullets right now, so let me go and put in an order for that ammo warehouse so that we don't start running out of things. And I'm pretty sure now that morning's coming around, we probably have everyone nicely rested. We absolutely do. Level 39, level 36, level 30, and level 28 gives us 133 versus the enemy's 80. I think that's perfectly fine. Let's send them out and see how this goes. Just to be clear, though, Julie speaking, transmitting from the lion's den and still looking great. I have received a distress call from a nearby town. Dragon's troops have launched an offensive to retake positions in this territory. The citizens have set up barricades to stop their advance, but they need our help urgently. We have to send reinforcements. We don't know if they will be able to resist much longer. Let's go ahead and start the mission. Helicopter heads out. It's going to take a little bit to get this done, but hopefully we're going to win. And just like that, we were victorious. Absolutely every part of this went fantastically. We didn't lose anybody. We got 9,000 gold from it as well. Not bad. Not bad at all. We obviously don't have our spy right now, but I can't really complain about that. I'm I'm really, really quite pleased with uh, with how that went. I'm really, really quite pleased with that. Now, Karen here is actually really close to being where she needs to be to uh, to be a spy, but she is now off work. She's got her, you know, she works nights and whatnot. So we're not going to worry too much about it. What I'm going to say is that that is going to do us for today. I know this game's a little different. I know this this video is um is something. I, I I will say it's something because my throat is killing me, but I had a lot of fun playing this. So if you do want to see more of this, absolutely let me know in the comments. Let me know on Twitter or whatever it's called. X. I, I let me know on social media. All right. All my socials will be linked in the description as per usual. But what's also down there will be a link to check out this game, which I'm having a lot of fun with, and I hope you're having a lot of fun with it as well. It's uh, it's it's giving me some some good vibes. It's reminding me of other things that I've played over the years. It's reminding me of some games that I played when I was younger as well. It's giving me flashbacks to like the um, the Army Men games. I know it's nothing like those, but the style of humor is really similar. And I I I'm pretty sure there's games like that on Steam. I might need to check out at some point. They're shooters though, so they're not going to be on the channel. Those will be things I play in my downtime. But anyway, that is going to do us for today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.